Hey, it's Monday. I'm Matthew Laria, and you're watching the Faith for Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast, and then we're going to get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you again today, Lord, for your Word. Lord, we ask you today for revelation of your Word. We ask you for grace and help to receive your Word, to put it into practice, and to see it work in our lives, and we do thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, all this week on the broadcast, we're doing a series of teachings entitled Calling Things That Be Not As Though They Were. Now, earlier this year on the broadcast, we did a series of teachings entitled Victory in Chaotic Times. And in that series, we were learning how as believers, we can experience victory right in the middle of this world that is full of evil, right in the middle of a hostile environment. We can be here, but not be touched by the evil that's here. In fact, that week on the broadcast, we were looking at Jeremiah 17, verse 7, which said that a man who trusts in the Lord is just like a tree that continues to bear fruit right in the midst of a drought. And if we will trust the Lord, we can be like that tree and be in the middle of an evil situation or in the middle of a hostile environment, but not be touched by the environment that we're in. Now, to enjoy that kind of victory, to enjoy that kind of victorious existence, we must live by faith. 1 John 5, 4 said that faith is our victory. It's how we overcome. In fact, in Jeremiah 17, talking about that tree, it said a man who trusts in the Lord will be like that tree. And so faith is absolutely vital if you, want, if you and I want to be unaffected by the environment that we're in. It's the only way to live victoriously is to live by faith. And if you and I are going to live by faith, then we have to learn and apply the fundamentals of faith. Now, why am I saying all this to you? Because this week on the broadcast, calling things that be not as though they were is a fundamental of faith. And it's the second fundamental of faith that we've given you this year on the broadcast. The first one was to cast all your cares on the Lord. And so this week on the broadcast, we're giving you the second fundamental of faith, which is to call those things that be not as though they were. Now, friend, this is one of the most powerful principles that you can learn as a believer. Throughout the Bible... God reveals to us the power of our words. And one of the most powerful things that you can do when you're facing a challenge is to put God's words in your mouth and declare them over your life. And calling things that be not as though they were is a form of that. And friend, this principle has been such a great help to me in my own life. It's led me to victory after victory after victory. And I believe that if you'll learn how to call things that be not as though they were, it'll do the same thing in your life. Now let's go over to Romans chapter 4, and we're going to look there at verse 17. And this will be our foundation text this week on the broadcast. Now, in the second part of that verse, it says that God who quickens the dead and calls things that be not as though they were. Let me read that to you again. That God who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. And so God does this. God calls things that be not as though they were. And friend, you and I are supposed to imitate Him. Ephesians 5.1 told us to imitate God. In 1 John 2.6, it said that you and I are supposed to conduct our lives the way Jesus conducted His life. 
And so if God calls those things that be not as though they were, then you and I should too. Now, before we're going to get into the meaning of calling things that be not as though they were, and before we learn how to actually do that in our lives, we need to talk about on today's broadcast the significance of your words. Now, why is that? Because if you don't believe your own words are significant, if you don't believe your own words are powerful, then you're not going to do this principle in your life. You're not going to apply this principle in your life. You're not going to call your body healed when it's not healed. You're not going to call yourself peaceful and joyful when you have symptoms of anxiety and depression all over you. You won't apply this principle in your life you won't use your words and call things that be not as though they were if you don't believe your words are powerful. And so let's look at a few verses that reveal to us the significance of our words. And friend, I believe as you see how significant and how powerful your words are, it'll motivate you and inspire you to use your words and call things that be not as though they were in your life. Proverbs 18 21 says this, it says death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now death and life are forces. Life is a force that works to make something strong. Life is a force that works to cause things to flourish, to cause things to prosper. Death is a force that works to weaken, decay, and destroy. Now, both the force of life and the force of death can work in any area of your life. For instance, life can be at work in your marriage, and that force of life will cause your marriage to prosper and to thrive and to be strong and to flourish. But death can also be working in your marriage, and it can work to weaken, decay, and destroy your marriage. And so these forces, life and death, they are spiritual forces, and they'll work in any area of your life. And again, when life is working, things will prosper, things will flourish, things will thrive, things will be strong. When death is working, things will be weak, things will be decaying, things will be destroyed. Now, Proverbs 18, 21 said that death and life, or you could say it like this, the force of death or the force of life is in the power of the tongue. And so with your own words, you can put these forces to work. If you speak good things over your marriage and speak the word of God over your marriage, you're putting the force of life to work. If you speak bad things over your marriage and speak things over your marriage that are in opposition to the Word of God, you will put the force of death to work. And so you can see that your words are significant and your words matter and what you say matters in your life. In Mark eleven twenty three, 23, Jesus said this. He said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain. And so again, we're talking about what you say. Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he will have whatsoever he says. Jesus is telling us in that verse that if you say something and believe that what you say will come to pass, you're going to have what you say. And so when you're facing challenges or facing obstacles in your life, your words are absolutely 100% vital if you're going to overcome that challenge. If you're facing something in your life and you say, I'll never overcome this, or I'll never get past this, or I just don't see how I'll ever experience victory over this. If you believe that and say that, then according to Jesus, you're going to have what you say. In James chapter 3, verse 6, in the easy to read version, it says that our tongues can start a fire that influence all of life. One translation actually says that 
with our tongues, we can bring destruction and disaster to our lives. And so you can see how far reaching the effect of your words are. That scripture says that they will influence, it can start an influence. Your tongue, excuse me, can start a fire that influences all of life. Your words will affect every area of your life. What you say is significant. What you say matters. In Psalm 34, 12, in the Living Bible, it says this, Do you want to live a long, good life? And then the next verse said, Keep your tongue from evil. And so what you say affects the kind of life you live. What you say affects the quality of life that you live. And friend, if you will put God's words in your mouth and call things that be not as though they were, you will see the power of that in your life and you will experience the positive effect of that in your life. If you, if you call things that be not as though they were according to the word of God, you will release the force of life in your life. You will have what you say on the good side of it. And you will affect every area of your life with your words. And if you'll do that, if you'll say what God says and call things that be not as though they were, you can enjoy a prosperous life, a long, good life. Praise the Lord. Now let's go over to 1 John chapter 5 and let's look at verse 4 there. And so seeing and knowing how significant your words are, you should already be being inspired to call things that be not as though they were in your life. And let me just jump ahead a little bit. You should be inspired to call your body healed because that's what the word says when that doesn't exist yet in your life. Why would you do that? Because you believe that your words are significant. You believe the power of life and death is in your tongue. You believe that you can have what you believe and what you say. And so when you got symptoms of sickness on your body, according to the word of God, you're going to call your body healed. If you're battling uh, symptoms of anxiety and depression in your life, well, according to the word of God, you have peace and joy in you right now. And so you're going to call yourself peaceful. You're going to call yourself joyful in line with the word of God, when that be not in your life, when that doesn't exist in your life, you're going to call it that way now. Why would you do that? Because you believe that your words have power and you believe that what you say is significant. Now in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, we've looked at this verse many times on the broadcast. It tells us there that whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And so if we're going to overcome challenges and things that come against us in our lives, faith is our victory. Now in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I have believed, and therefore have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore we speak. Now, what is the connection between those two verses? Well, faith is your victory, but here's something about faith. Faith speaks. 2 Corinthians 4.13 again says, I have believed, therefore have I spoken. And so faith is your victory, but faith speaks. And so if you're going to walk in victory... You're going to have to learn how to live and walk by faith. And one thing that faith does is faith speaks. Faith is expressed and released through your words. In other words, if you believe something, then you will say something. Come on, what did the verse say? I believed, therefore have I spoken. If you believe you're healed when you don't see it, you'll say you're healed when you don't see it. Come on, if you believe you have peace and joy when you don't see it or feel it, you'll say you have peace and joy when you don't see it or feel it. Now, why is this significant? 
Because faith is our victory and faith speaks. Therefore, we are going to win with our faith and with our words. Two big components of us enjoying victory and overcoming obstacles and overcoming challenges in our lives is what we believe and what we say. These are major issues if you and I want to walk and live in victory. You know, in Mark chapter 5, the woman with the issue of blood, she had an issue of blood in her body for 12 years. She had seen doctors and she was only getting worse. But one day she heard of Jesus and the scripture tells us that she came through the crowd and touched the hem of his garment. And it says this about her. It says, for she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. What did she say? She said, if I touch his clothes, I will be made whole. Friends, she is believing and she is speaking. And Jesus said this to her. She got healed supernaturally. And Jesus said this to her daughter, your faith has made you whole. Well, what did her faith do? Well, one thing that her faith did is her faith spoke. She said, if I touch his clothes, I will be made whole. And what she believed and what she said were major components in her enjoying victory in that situation. You know, the same thing happened with David in 1 Samuel 17. It says this in verse 45, Then said David to the Philistine, Come on, he's talking to Goliath, and his faith is in his words. He said, This day will the Lord deliver you into my hand. I will smite you. I will take your head from you, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air. What is he doing? David is believing, and David is expressing what he believes through his words. Two big components of his victory was what he believed and what he said. You know, a lot of times when we talk about David and Goliath, you know, we get focused on the slingshot and the rock and the armor and all this stuff, and, and that's wonderful. But David didn't win with a slingshot and a rock. He won with his faith, and he won with his words. And then in Daniel chapter 3, Right before the three Hebrews were getting ready to be thrown into the fiery furnace, they said this to Nebuchadnezzar. They told him, if you throw us in, our God will deliver us out of your hand, O king. What are they doing? They're believing and they're speaking. They're believing and they're saying, if you throw us into that fiery furnace, the God we serve will deliver us. They believe that? How do I know they believe that? Because they wouldn't bow down and worship his image, the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. They believe that, and then they said, if you throw us in, our God will deliver us. And so, friend, I want you to understand that we win with our faith and with our words. And if you're going to experience victory in your life, if you're going to overcome challenges, if you're going to overcome obstacles, your words are absolutely vital in doing that. You are going to have to learn how to find out what God says in his word and believe and speak and call things that be not as though they were. If God says that I'm free from this addiction that I'm facing, then I say I'm free from this addiction that I'm facing right now when maybe I'm, I'm still experiencing the reality of that addiction in my life. Maybe somebody's addicted to cigarettes or something like that and you want to be free. God says you're free. And so if you want to be free, you're going to have to say what God says. You're going to have to believe. You're going to have to speak. You're going to have to call your body healed when it doesn't look healed. You're going to have to believe you're healed and say you're healed. You're going to have to believe you're free and you're going to have to say you're free. You're going to have to believe that you have joy and peace in you right now because that's the, what the word says. And then you're going to have to decree it over your life. This is absolutely vital if you want to win, if you want to overcome, and if you want to experience victory in your life, when you're facing a challenge, you have to get your mouth in gear. 
You have to start calling those things that be not as though they were. What does that mean? We'll find out more about that on tomorrow's broadcast. But you have to find out what God says about you, what God has promised you, and you have to call it yourself that way right now. You have to call it that way in line with the word right now when you don't see it, when you don't feel it. And if you do that, it will position you to overcome the challenges that you're facing. You know, in Matthew chapter 4, when the enemy attacked Jesus, you, you notice how Jesus won in those verses. He said to the enemy, it is written. Jesus put God's word in his mouth and spoke. And friend, if you want to overcome the things the enemy tries to bring against you, you're going to have to put God's word in your mouth and speak. And one form of doing that is calling things that be not as though they were. And so friends, your words are significant. What you say matters. You're going to win. You're going to overcome by believing and by speaking. And so again, it's absolutely vitally important that when you're facing a challenge, when you're under attack, that you get your mouth in gear. Why? Because your words matter. Because, because Jesus said what you believe and what you say is what you're going to have. Because Proverbs 18, 21 said life and death are in the power of the tongue. And so when we come under attack, when we're facing challenges, we, one of the first things we do is we get our mouth in gear we find out what God says in his word and we start calling ourselves what God calls us, whether we see it or not, whether we feel it or not, we do it right now. This is calling things that be not as though they were. And friend, this will propel you to victory in your life. It's good news, isn't it? Now, as we're closing today's broadcast, I want to remind you of these three things. Number one, you will not call things that be not as though they are without acknowledging the significance of your words. If you're gonna apply this principle in your life, you first have to acknowledge my words matter. And then number two, we win in life. We overcome in life with our faith and with our words. And then number three, your words are vital in overcoming obstacles and experiencing victory in your life. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we're asking you all this week on the broadcast to help us grow and develop in calling things that be not as though they were. Lord, we're asking you for revelation on this, of how we can apply it better in our lives, of how we can see it work in our lives and produce victory in our lives and we do thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching today's broadcast. Now, don't forget to come back tomorrow for Tuesday's edition of our Faith for Life broadcast. And we're going to continue this series entitled, Calling Things That Be Not As Though They Were. We'll see you then.